Hello everyone. This is Chef Shalendra Dharekar from SSMS College of Hotel Management, Pune, Assistant Professor. Welcome to my new session on introduction of food styling, which is very trendy in the market. So let's begin our session by our objective. So obviously the first objective will be what is food styling? Then uh, we'll also see why we need food styling in today's world. We see what are the tool used by the stylist and some of the tips shared uh, by the food stylist we are going to observe. We are also going to uh, see a professional video about food styling by a stylist. So let's begin to understand what is food styling. As you can see in the pictures, they are just simply fruits, but how they are presented is very, very important. That is all about food styling. So food styling is the art of playing with the food and food arrangement. So it look appealing, delicious, fresh. Food styling is nothing by plating food for filming. Okay. One cannot be a food stylist if one lack of imagination, elevation of pictures to other level uh, than a simple one. Adding any ingredients to the frame or simply by shifting crockery or cutlery, that is all about food styling. You need to have that vision, that imagination, that creativity in you to be a food stylist. The very basic or foundation of food styling involve using freshest and prettiest food available in the best possible manner in order to make them highly pleasing to the eye. So why we need food styling? In today's world, the first impression is the last impression, right? That is what we always talk about in food industry. Food styling is what assure you that the first impression of your food on your target audience or on your customers in a hospitality business is very, very important. And that is given by food stylists to give beautiful first impression of your product. If you are a restaurant, you can hire a food stylist to give your splendid makeover to your menu which will help to increase your online social media presence. As we know, we are, we are very much online now. This, because of the pandemic situation, we need to have a better presentation of your product, what you are selling. Not only this, food will look more visually pleasing and there is nothing wrong in making it to your customer what to come back for more. Food style is also helps if you are a chef to learn how, how to present your food, what you put efforts and how to click photograph of your food to be uh, uh, ahead of your game in a competitive market for a chef. Let's see what are the equipment used by the professional food stylist. This is a checklist. As you can see in the pictures, there is electric charcoal starter, uh, which is on the left hand side, which helps to give a shiny, nice barbecue feel to your, your chicken, your meat. Also the blow touch, which is also do the same purpose. Then we have small equipment like brush, tongue tweezers, a scale, a ruler, a tape measure to have the dimension and the knives uh, to uh, various kind of knives of kitchen as well as palette to give a stroke on the plate. You have a cutting skills uh, showing or keeping on the plate, plate on the chopping board. So this is what you need for a food styling. Let's see the tips of food styling for a beginner. When you start to be a food styler, there are five main tips uh, for a beginner. So using ingredients as prop, 
So using your ingredients in a picture are a great indicator of what goes in the recipe. So keeping your ingredients, for example, you have a photograph of a pie on the top left hand side where you have, a, it is raspberry pie. So you have a raspberry in the picture. So positioning that uh, ingredients in your photographs will always create a wow factor and people will know this is a cake or this is a pie which is having a raspberry into it. Then adding second point of tips, adding depth in your picture. Where you are styling a picture, keep all the elements at different and a very distance from the camera. If you end up placing them in the same line, in the uh, very close to each other, in the same uh, level, then it looks flat. So you have to create elevation distance in your frame. As you can see, uh, you see there is a raspberry uh, this distance from your pie. You have eggs lying there. You have a, a linen lying there, plates lying there. So this is what we call uh, adding depth to the picture. Then third point is adding height. Add element of different height to cut and avoid having a monotonous and rather a flat finish to your picture. Experience with the length of your dessert to the length of your prop from ingredients to the crockery. So you have a hand which is pouring uh, with a spoon a cream on your pie. So that's uh, creating height. Using the correct fabric, you have a fabric in the picture uh, um, which is not overpowering to your main product which is your pie. Okay, so just giving a, a different uh, adding to your frame of fabric. It is not a main ingredients of your picture. Last, not the least, using the right prop. Prop can literally make or break the frame. Always remember that your dish is a star. Lead protagonist of the picture and the prop are only uh, uh, it is just a supporting actor. It is not a main actor of your frame. Okay, they, your main, uh, like with this example, your raspberry pie is your main leading actor or dominating to your frame. And make sure your prop doesn't dominate your main ingredients. As you can see, the first look, you see the pie, then you realize there is an egg, there is a raspberry, there is a spoon hold it by uh, the hand. So this is what we are the tips for food styling for a beginner. Let's see, there are more few tips. Okay, some bullet point of the tips. Use less food than your normal, what you use. Use paper to add texture to your plate. Um, like in this picture over here uh, at the bottom, there is a notebook used by uh, the stylist allow a look for a contrast background we can see the fish uh, plated uh, there is a leaves green leaves and a, a white plate and you have a contrast uh, um, colors used there then choose simple crockery and tableware as you can see the spice photographs on the top side uh, uh, just a wooden spoon is huge uh, look very fantastic, elegant. Okay, get some work in progress shoot. So, uh, for example, at the bottom picture, there is a cake, there is a tea bag, and there is a tea, and just uh, a cake accompanied by the tea. So, and the book is there. So, somebody is ready for afternoon tea, have reading the book, and he's just put the tea bag in the hot water in. So that is work in progress shoot. Okay, try and capture the yummy factor. So you have a cake there, yummy cake with the strawberries on it. So, uh, so that is a yummy factor. Simple table where crockery we talk about. So that is a extra tip to have uh, doing food styling. Let's see the video by the professional. 
what she wants hey to Hey guys, say. it's Nisha. Welcome back to another video. Today I have something a little bit different in store for you. If you follow me on Instagram at Rainbow Plant Life, you know that I'm really passionate about food photography. And I get requests all the time to do tutorials on food styling and food photography and to share tips on how to improve your food photography. So that's exactly what I'm going to do today. I'm going to take you behind the scenes, which is just right back here in the uh, other part of my apartment, and I'll show you how I'm going to style some cranberry pecan muffins. No, cranberry streusel. No cranberry orange streusel muffins. Um, I'll show you how I style them, I'll show you different scenes on how to set them up, how to pair different props together, and the settings I'm using on my camera. And before I show you the actual setup, I want to talk about some basics. Alright, first I'm going to show you the equipment I'm using for my food photography setup. And this is a very introductory DSLR camera. It is a Nikon D3300. This costs about $400. And it comes with a kit lens, but I don't really recommend that for food photography. I'm using a 35mm f.18G lens, and that's going to run you less than $200. This is probably one of the most inexpensive DSLR setups you'll get, uh, between $500 and $600. I used this camera for the first 12 to 16 months, 18 months, of uh, doing food photography, and it takes really great photos. It's just not like a professional high-end camera, but if you're just starting out, there's really no need to spend thousands of dollars on a camera or a lens. You can definitely start small. That's what I did. Um, you can also get a Canon. Canon makes great introductory DSLR cameras that are really affordable as well. The Canon Rebel series is really popular with beginners. In addition to my camera, I also have a tripod. This is a very inexpensive travel tripod, not necessarily recommended for food photography because it's not super stable, but I have been using it for the last year or two without breaking anything. Um, and any equipment I'm talking about, I'll put in the description box below. And this is the tripod I use when I want to take shots that are like head on or at an angle or something like this. And then I also have a tripod with an overhead arm for when I want to take flat lays or photos like overhead. Like, I don't know what this hand motion is, but you know what an overhead shot is. This is a much larger tripod. Um, the legs aren't even extended. It's very sturdy. And this is an overhead arm that comes separately and that helps me take those overhead shots. Um, I don't have to hurt my back and bend over and do it by myself. I just use the tripod for that. Now let's talk about lighting. Lighting is the most important thing for good food photography. If you are a beginner, my advice is to always shoot in natural light. If you're a little more advanced, you can experiment with some artificial lighting. But for beginners, my recommendation is to always shoot in natural light. And natural light is just the light that comes from nature. So the light that comes through one of your windows, or if you have a glass door, or even a screen door. The biggest mistake I see on Instagram with food photos is the lighting. And it's usually because the person is using an overhead kitchen light, or a lamp, or an overhead light in their living room, or wherever they're shooting. And it gives the food this like really orange, unattractive quality because of the light bulb. And the the last thing you want is your food to look unappetizing. So my advice is to turn off all your lights in your house and experiment. Go find the best windows and sources of light and doors in your house and try different times of day, try different seasons because the best source of light will vary based on the location of the sun, the angle of the sun, the time of year, the time of day. So get creative and don't be afraid to experiment. And you might think that the more natural light, the better, and you might be tempted to go outside and shoot right in the sunlight. But that's actually not a good idea because having direct sunlight on your food is gonna create harsh shadows and blown out highlights. It's gonna make your food look just harsh and like not have that nice soft glow that you want for food photography. So the best natural light is actually indirect light. So it's already indirect if it's coming through your window because it's blocked by the window. If you feel like you don't have enough light coming through your windows or doors because you live in a dark space or it's winter, not to worry. I recently just moved into a new apartment, but before that I lived in a really old building on the ground floor and it was always dark. But I was still able to take some really good shots because one, I used a tripod, always, and two, um, you can use like a reflector which is like a white surface and you can hold it up to put against the dark shadows um, that will add some light and you don't need to buy anything specific you can just get white foam boards from your craft store and make your own or you can hang it up on a clip or if you have a helper in the house you can have them hold it while you're taking the photo but if you have too much light coming in maybe because 
you have a huge window or it's really sunny that day and it's the middle of the day, you're gonna wanna diffuse the light so it's not as harsh and I'll show you how I do that. This is the window I normally shoot my photos by. It faces south, south by southwest, so it gets a lot of light in the afternoon. Honestly, too much light. So I'm gonna show you how I diffuse the light. As you can see, without blocking any of the light from my window, the light is way too harsh for food photography. There are blown out highlights and uneven shadows and it gives the food a harsh and unattractive appearance. I just take these black foam boards that I bought at a craft store just for a few dollars and I put them up against my window and draw the shades to block out the light. But I'll still have enough light coming in from the other window in my apartment. Today I'm showing you three different ways to style and present these cranberry orange streusel muffins. And the first method will be the most basic. It's going to be an overhead flat light of the muffins directly in the pan. The muffins are directly in the muffin pan that I bake them in and it's sitting on top of a food photography board. To help style the scene, I have some fresh cranberries as well as sugared cranberries to give a festive flair. For this shot, I want a direct overhead shot of the muffins in the pan. But instead of having all 12 muffins just sitting there, I want to get a little playful and add some creativity. So I'm going to start by taking one muffin out of the pan and to replace it, I'll add some cranberries in the muffin tin. When I'm styling a dish, I like to use as props the actual ingredients in the dish to remove Remind the viewer of what the dish is all about. And I think I'll turn this muffin over on its side so you can see the different textures of the muffin. And I'll replace one more muffin, but this time I'll use sugared cranberries instead of the plain ones. I could take the photo as is now, but I want the colors and textures to pop a bit more. So I made a glaze to drizzle on top. Well, actually, I made the glaze because it's delicious and it's part of the recipe, but it's also great for photos. And lastly, I'll add some orange zest on top, again, to emphasize the ingredients in this recipe. And I'm using my tripod with the overhead arm, as well as a wireless remote, which enables me to take a photo without touching the camera, so there won't be any camera shake. Since this is an overhead flat shot, there's no difference in depth of field, so I want everything to be in relatively equal focus. To do that, I shoot at a narrow aperture, or in other words, at a high f-stop. Since the shutter speed is really low, only one-third of a second, there's no way I could take this photo at this aperture in ISO of 100 without using a tripod. Now I want to get a more close-up shot of the muffins in the pan, so I'm going to lower my tripod legs so the camera is closer to the food. To get the sharpest focus, sometimes I shoot using manual focus, and I zoom in on the live view so I can really closely see in clear detail if the muffins are in focus. Autofocus does work really well on most DSLR cameras, depending on your lens, so I often use that just because it's a lot quicker. For the second scene, I want to convey a more explicit holiday feel. So in the first scene, there were some subtle hints of the holidays from the sugared cranberries and from the recipe itself. But in the second scene, I'm really going for a true festive feel. So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna layer in some props to give it that holiday flair. For the second scene, I'm using the same food photography board, but because I want it to be more festive, I'm going to layer in some holiday props one layer at a time. It's always best to start with just one or two props and work your way up, instead of starting with a bunch of props. That way it's easier to remove elements if you have too much going on, but it's a little harder to remove a bunch of props if you already have them there and are determined to use them. Because I like to show the elements of the recipe as props. I'm going to add some fresh cranberries to this marble cutting board. To give this photo a homemade, rustic look, I'm crushing the cranberries so you get a sense of what my kitchen actually looks like when I use cranberries. Then, to add a festive flair, I'm layering in some pine leaf branches. When you add props, be sure to observe the scene from the angle that you're photographing it from so you get a sense of what it actually looks like. Like here, I noticed the branch was too much, so now I added a small piece instead. Then I'm adding some more sugared cranberries because it reminds me of a Christmas tree with ornaments. I'm continuing to layer in props to frame the scene. The main focus is the round board with the muffins, so I'm adding elements around that to frame it as a photo. In addition to adding the cranberries, I'm adding some pieces of pecans since those are in the muffins as well. This looks good to me now, so now it's time to add the icing. The white color of the icing really stands out against the rest of the darker colors in this photo, which is why I'm using it. 
Like the first photo, since this is an overhead shot, I want everything in equal focus, so I'm using a narrow aperture of f8. The shutter speed is really low again, so the tripod is essential. If I were to bump up the ISO to say 800 or higher, that would serve the purpose of adding more light to the lens, to be very simplistic about it, which would then enable me to use a faster shutter speed and make the tripod unnecessary. But since I want minimal grain in my food photos wherever possible, ISO 100 is the best option. For the third and final scene, I want to add a human element to the scene. I think it's amazing when photographers incorporate some sort of human element, whether it's their hands or their bodies, because it adds more dimension to the photo, it tells a story, and it just seems more inviting for the viewer. For the final scene, I'm using a different photography board. This one is wooden, so it'll have more of a rustic look, but I still want the holiday vibe, so I'm using these cute string lights. So the round wooden board on top of the wooden board felt like too much wood, so I'm layering in a white linen towel to add some dimension and variety. And for more holiday flair, I have some pine branches with holly in a vase. Unlike the first two shots, I'm taking this last photo at a roughly 90 degree angle instead of overhead, so I won't need the overhead arm tripod. With food photos that are taken head on at a 90 degree angle or 45 degree angle, it's usually best to have a shallower depth of field. It creates a more interesting photo when you have a blurred or slightly blurred background and a very focused foreground. So I want to make sure that the muffin in the very front looks perfect. And if you don't get the perfect shot or have the right lighting on your first try, just keep experimenting by changing your aperture or your shutter speed or ISO until you get the shot and lighting that you want. As I mentioned, I want to add a human element to this photo, so I'm going to get in the photo myself. And I'm putting on a cozy winter sweater to see how that looks instead of my dress. Action photos are pretty popular with food photography, and if I want to capture the motion of pouring the glaze on the muffins without any motion blur, I have to increase my shutter speed to at least 1 over 60 or higher. I'm able to get in the photo myself by using that remote timer. First, I make sure that the muffins are in focus and the composition is set by looking in the camera live view. And then I go into the scene myself, and when I'm ready, I hit the remote. But you might have to try this out a few times before getting it right. Well, that's it for my food photography and food styling tutorial. I really hope you found it useful. And if you did, please hit that thumbs up button as well as the red subscribe button. I didn't get too much into the specific details or technical aspects in this video in the interest of time. But if that's something you want to see or if you have questions, let me know in the comments below. And if you have any other suggestions for future videos. Fantastic explanation by the expert how the food photography is done uh, and also the setting of the camera which uh, really helps uh, in the future for a bigness okay that's it from my side these are my references which i use to make this video uh, i request uh, as of my student please uh, go and uh, in the description box of my video and attempt for the quiz which i prepare on the base of this video thank you so much have a nice day